All right, everybody, as many of y'all know, I'm all about some wildlife conservation. If you'll go back through some of my other videos, you'll see where I'm dealing with native species in South Mississippi. You'll see my love of history from my reviews of Nick, AKA the fat electrician. He came out with this video almost a month ago and I had already posted a video where I was reviewing of his a month ago and I was like, dude, I got to save up. I, I, I can't use that video just yet. It's been a month now. I try not to do more than one fat electrician review a month, but this is one of my favorites because he's moving into wildlife conservation and talking about the guys that did that wildlife conservation. Without further ado, Nick, tell us about Operation Band of Beavers. This is easily one of my favorite stories of all time, and it is the epitome of it's not stupid if it works. Correct. Today we're talking about Operation Beaver Drop, that time that a bunch of World War II veterans that worked for the Idaho Fish and Game Department got assigned the task of relocating a bunch of beavers to a different habitat, and they decided that the cheapest, safest, most cost-effective way to go about that was to strap them to parachutes and throw them out of a plane. And we're gonna get into it right after this <laughs> ad, because I got bills. This video is brought to you by Conflict of Nations, a free online... <laughs> okay. Wow dealing with wildlife conservation i have never thought about strapping any animal to a parachute so let's see what he's got to say and uh this game conflict of nation all right let's see what world war three is and PvP military strategy game. It is based on a World War III type scenario where you get to pick your own country or you can pick a state outside I'm, of the United States. I'm in Mississippi. That's really the only way to make it fair for everybody else. Otherwise, America would be the instant win. Personally. Oh, uh, okay. Wait a second. I've seen all these memes and stuff of people, uh, or I've seen where they did the Hunger Game type maps of the United States. I'm picking the Southeast. You know, I'm taking Mississippi, Louisiana, Alabama, Georgia, Florida, um, into Tennessee, South Carolina, you're in here, uh, in the lower part of Arkansas, that area. Yeah, we're going to win that. That's what I'm picking. I always start out as playing Iowa for obvious reasons, and my first order of business every single time is attacking Minnesota and turning them from Minnesota into Upper Iowa. <laughs> they can't win a Super Bowl, and they're not going to win this battle. It's an easy W. But you don't have to attack. Remember, this is a strategy game. You can be diplomatic and form an alliance with another nation and work together. I mean, you could. I'm not going to. I'm going to build up my army with tanks, jets, and nuclear submarines and turn my attention to Wisconsin. Okay, I'm going to be honest with you guys. The nuclear submarines are not super helpful in Midwestern warfare, but that's the type of flexibility that Conflict of Nations allows. I've already taken over Minnesota, the land of 10,000 lakes. I'm going to put a nuclear submarine in every one of those lakes. Anyways, if you want to give it a try, it's available on both PC and mobile. And if you use my link and discount code down below, you're going to get 13,000 free gold and a free one month membership. Let's get back to the video. <laughs> All right, let's just take this from the top. Beavers, okay, one of my favorite animals. Why? Because I believe it is the animal that is most similar to humans. And I know what you're going to say. You're going to say, what about monkeys? What about apes? What about chimpanzees? They've all got thumbs and they poke shit with sticks and they eat <laughs> bananas just like people do. That's fine. I understand that they're very similar to people, but beavers are the most similar to humans in spirit. We are the only animals on the planet with the audacity to walk into a new ecosystem and be like, wow, I hate everything about this. I could A, migrate, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go with option B and change everything about the world around me to make it suit me better and fuck everybody else. Now, do I enjoy the wetlands that beavers create with their dams? No, it's not my jam. However, game recognize game because when a beaver sees running water and is like, you going to do this? Okay, fine. That's all I needed for him to do that. And it, it became personal with me. 
It's no different than when it's July and it's hot out and I decide to turn my air conditioner on so I can domesticate the wind so that my balls aren't hot, okay? It's about changing the environment around you rather than changing yourself. Okay, it's just that species-wide main character energy of I don't need to evolve anymore, I'm perfect how I am, I'm going to evolve the world around me to some shit that I like more. So, while I have a great childish respect for beavers, unfortunately for the beavers, between the 15, 16, 17, 1800s, uh, their furs made dope-ass hats and they were really popular all across Europe, and the beavers were almost hunted to extinction for their pelts. Okay, and as I'm sure you can imagine, no beavers means no beaver dams, no beaver dams means no wetlands, and no wetlands messes up the entire ecosystem. Okay, we can't yep. have it. We gotta quit killing all the beavers. So the yep. early 1900s, people realized this. They put protections on the beavers and we quit trying to hunt them to extinction and actually try to help encourage their population to build back up, okay? Fast forward like 50 years, 1945, 1946, right around then, all the young men that went off and fought World War II are coming back home. They got a bunch of money from fighting that war. They want to get a wife, build a house, have some kids, do people things. So they start expanding. And one of the places <laughs> this happens in is a town called McCall, Idaho. People and they things. start expanding and the town gets bigger and bigger. And eventually it displaces a bunch of beavers that have been out in the woods doing beaver things for hundreds of years. And these new beavers get displaced <laughs> and they go out and they start fucking up a bunch of farmers' fields and irrigation systems. <laughs> and it gets to the point that the people in the town are just going to start shooting these beavers because they're messing everything up. At this point, the Idaho Fish and Game Department, presumably also full of World War One and World War II veterans, steps in and they're like, no, we're not going to, we're not going to kill these beavers. These guys are awesome. They do a lot for the environment. We're going to, we're going to take them. We'll move them somewhere else where they can thrive. We're not killing beavers. We're just relocating them. So there's a the plan. They're going to capture the beavers alive. They're going to drive them as far as they can on roads. And then they're going to pack them in on horses and mules miles Pink and Lula. miles into the wilderness where they're not going to be near any humans ever. And this is a complete disaster. Pretty much from the start. They capture the beavers alive, stick them in a cage, throw them on a truck, try to drive them hours and hours into the wilderness. This is really hard on them because beavers, they're a lot like me. I like to sit in my house in the air conditioning. They like to sit in their dams <laughs> in the nice, damp, wet environment to keep cool. Beavers can't keep cool in the back of an unair conditioned truck in the mid 1940s. A lot of them are getting heat stroke. They're passing out. They're dying. They quit eating or they get super agitated and they're very combative the entire time because they're hot. Then even if the beavers do survive the truck ride, they're all pissed off and angry and now they're getting strapped to a horse or a mule and that pisses off the horse because he's got a bunch of angry beavers all over him and now the <laughs> horse is pissed off and the whole thing just... It doesn't work. So now the fish and game department is like, well, what are we going to do? We got to save all these beavers. We want to get them up in the mountains so they can build their wetlands. It's going to help protect the town from flash flooding. It's going to prevent erosion. It's going to be great for the environment. We got to save these guys. And one guy at the fish and game department presumably is like, I mean, I got an idea. Hear me out. We do have an awful lot of extra surplus parachutes from World War II laying around and we've got a plane. Okay, now to us in 2024, this sounds insane, but you gotta remember, this is 1948, okay? There's no OSHA, there's no like rules and regulations, and, and it's in Idaho, which is basically the middle of nowhere at this point. Nobody's telling these guys what to do. A bunch of World War I, World War II veterans are like, huh. It's, a, it's actually a pretty good idea, Jimmy. You know, it did work at Normandy and the beavers aren't <laughs> even gonna have Germans shooting at them. So I mean, pretty high likelihood they'll be fine. Let's try it. So first order of business, we got to develop a box that opens up once it hits the ground and gets the beavers to the ground safely. Pretty simple. It's basically two halves of a box with some holes drilled in it. They weave the rope through. Once the parachute lands, there's no more tension on the rope. The box just kind of falls open. The beavers get out and start doing beaver things. So first we're going to test it before we put any innocent beavers at risk. We're going to take some empty weights, put them in the boxes, go up in the plane, drop them over the practice field, see how it goes. Goes fine the first couple of times. Okay, let's try it with one beaver just for practice. So they go ahead, they pick an older male. He's out of his breeding prime, potentially dangerous to some of the younger males. If something does happen, he's lived out most of his life. They name him Dronimo because they're a bunch of meatheads and that shit's funny. So they put him in a crate. They take him up in the plane, drop him off over the practice field from 800 feet. Dronimo makes it and survives. Now, obviously we're not gonna put all our beavers in one basket because of one successful test run. We need multiple test runs to be certain that this is gonna work. And now that Dronimo is technically our lucky beaver, he's gonna do it again. So he does, Dronimo does it again and again and again and he keeps jumping like more than 12 jumps this beaver makes and by the end of it the parks employees reported that Dronimo would actually run up to them and help them put him in the crate because he was ready to go again 
Buh! This is animal abuse, and what if one of those boxes didn't open after the parachute landed? Buh! Okay, first of all, no it isn't. I've already went over the options. A, they could stay where they were at, being displaced, and end up getting shot by farmers for messing up their crops. B, they could spend days in transit on the truck and on a pack mule suffering and potentially dying. Or C, we can throw them in an airplane, fly them there in 15 minutes, and then throw them out the side. They can get their jump wings while they're doing their band of beavers reenactment, okay? It's literally the best option. Okay, secondly, why are you worried about the box not opening? Like, did you think about this at all? It's a pine box and that's a beaver, okay? Literally the only animal in the animal kingdom known for cutting down trees with its fucking face. I have the utmost confidence that if one of those boxes malfunctions, the beaver is gonna figure it out. All right, so now they have their beaver delivery method. They develop a plan. They pick out a bunch of different locations all over this wooded area where they're gonna be able to drop these beavers off in groups of like three to five, two males, three females, one male, three females, something like that. Enough that they're gonna be able to rebuild their own little colonies, but they're gonna be spread out enough that they're not gonna congregate into one thing. And it's gonna be a humongous boost to the beaver population. This is what conservation is all about. So they get that all figured out. They have the plan in place. They know the delivery method. Now they just gotta go catch all the beavers. So they go back to town, catch them all. There's 76 of them. They take them back. They start loading them in crates and they're gonna take them up in the plane and throw them out the side. And here's the best part about the whole thing. They filmed it. Into the drop box nearly ready for that flight back into the mountain. And this is where you can really start to see that this is a different time. I mean, look at this absolute Chad just manhandling this beaver into that crate with no safety equipment, no gloves, no eye pro, nothing. If this were modern day, that guy would have leather protective gloves up to his elbow. He'd have safety glasses with a hard hat, with a face shield, with a leather apron. He'd have two dudes holding his hand while he did it just to make the safety guy happy. No, this is just some angry war veteran throwing a beaver into a box like it's another eight hour work day it's fantastic that's it they get the beavers loaded up on the plane the plane takes off they drop all the beavers in their designated drop zones 75 out of the 76 survived i don't know how they know this i'm assuming they had people on the ground at the different drop locations to make sure the box is opened or that the beavers made it or whatever but apparently the one beaver that didn't make it had somehow either slipped through the crack when the rope was loose or eaten his way out of the box after they had let it out of the plane and the beaver was last seen standing on top of the box with the parachute above him and he probably would have been fine except when he got 75 feet off the ground he decided to jump so on one hand that's kind of sad but on the other hand uh you know natural selection if the other 75 beavers figured it out and you didn't it's probably on you. On a happier note, though, the boys at the Fish and Game Department decided to hook up their lucky beaver, Dronimo. Uh, this is posted in the Journal of Wildlife Management, Volume 14, Number 2, April of 1950. The article, Transplanting Beavers by Airplane and Parachute by Elmo W. Heater, Idaho Fish and Game Department, McCall, Idaho. And I quote, Geronimo had a priority reservation on the first ship into the hinterland and that with three young females went with him. They had to hook up their boy. And he made it. Apparently they went to check in on him a couple years later and his new colony was, and I quote, very well established. And Dronimo was not unique in that because pretty much every drop zone ended up turning into a thriving beaver colony in the following years because they kept tabs on this entire thing. And not only did it work, it was also super cost effective because according to this journal, the cost of transplanting uh, one of these colonies was $30. It was $2 for the box, $16 for the surplus cargo parachute, and the flight time, man hours, and fuel totaled to $12 for a total of $30 per colony. And just to be clear, that's the actual crazy part about this story. It's not the fact that they actually had airborne beavers to go save the environment. No, that seems pretty reasonable. The crazy part is that these guys back in the 1940s managed to get the job done, have fun, and record it, and they did it for like three to five hundred dollars because we all know in modern times if they wanted to do this there'd have to be like a 15 year long environmental impact study that costs the u.s taxpayers 25 million dollars just so that the government could determine that if you drop beavers off in the forest they will in fact do what beavers do and then once the government goes ahead and says it is in fact okay to put beavers in the woods, it's gonna take another 10 years for Lockheed Martin and Boeing to bid on the contract worth $100 million to relocate 100 beavers into the woods. Is it just me, or was that the stupidest thing we've ever seen? Sorry, I'm ranting. In conclusion, the moral of the story is, if it sounds dumb, but it works, 
it's not that dumb. And sometimes it's ridiculously cost effective to just let people do their job. Also, beavers are cool and airborne beavers are even cooler. And this has been the story of America's band of beavers, the airborne paratrooper beavers that went in to save the environment. Thank you for watching. Best way to support the channel is go buy some merch over the fatelectrician.com. Quack, bang, out. I didn't make a single vagina joke in that entire video. I'm finally maturing. Oh, and one more thing. Don't forget to go check out Conflict of Nations, okay? You get to pick your own country, mainly the United States. Otherwise, let's face it, you're just competing for second place. Don't forget to use my code down below to get the freebies. I'm going to go conquer Wisconsin. Why? Because they've got spotted cow beer and I want some. Okay, y'all. Different day. Gotta love this. I filmed this a few days ago. Uh, Ryan said for some reason the mic uh, did not pick up my outro. So here I am. I told him, I said, I'll come in and do it after I get off work. Let me get in. I'll do the outro. So here's my outro, folks. Sorry about that. Uh, one, thank y'all very much if you stayed this far. Uh, if you have and you are not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. If you like the content of this video, please make sure that you go to Nick's channel, The Fat Electrician, and his second channel, The Fat Files, and subscribe to him as well because he has so many good videos i don't review all of his stuff i just review ones that make sense to me because you know i deal with natural resources in the southeast area so uh please make sure you go over and visit his channel and look appreciate y'all staying if you stayed this long mash that like button and we'll see y'all next week you take care have a great day